welcome back to the FEI YouTube channel. And for those of you that are new, welcome to their channel. My name is Stephanie Morado and I'm a pet YouTuber. So before we get started, let me introduce you to the gang. So we have four horses to start. So this is Louie. He is a horse that we rescued from a kill pen. He is a 16 year old chestnut gelding. Trigger is a 10 year old chestnut gelding. And he is the main horse that I ride. Alright, so our last two horses, we have Cash. He is a two-year-old quarter horse done gelding. Hi, Bubba's. Alright, last but not least, this is our 10-year-old quarter horse, Blaze. This is Moose. He is our little dairy cow that we rescued from a baby and we bottle fed him. He's such an angel. And then right behind him is Al, and he's a mini Zebu. And these are all of our chickens. And our two turkey right over there. Penelope, come here. All right, you guys, and this is the infamous Miss Penelope, our mini pig. She's so sweet. Hi, Penelope. Can you say hi to the FEI YouTube channel? And these are our dogs. And we actually have three barn cats, but they are not around because they're barn cats. All right, so that's my gang. So now guys, let's get into the nitty gritty and talk about how much it actually costs to have a horse. All right, guys, so this is one of the biggest questions that I had before I bought my first horse, and it's a super, super helpful thing to know. And a ton of people ask me this, so I am here today to give you all the knowledge that I have on what it takes to buy, keep, and take care of a horse. So what I like to say is most of your biggest expenses are gonna be in the beginning of owning a horse because you have to collect all your supplies. Just like with anything, the beginning's always the most expensive because you're getting it all. But once you have it all, you're kind of just streamlined after that and taking care of what you have. So the first big purchase that you're gonna have is the actual horse, but some horses you can actually get for free. So there are certain horses that you can find that just need a good home, light trail riding, and nothing more. But if you're looking for something with more of a performance horse or certain sporting, then you could be closer to 900 all the way up to $5,000 depending on if you just want a trail horse or if you want a certain discipline horse that's been trained to either barrel racing, reining, endurance, jumping, you get the picture. So it just depends. But if you're really just looking just to get a horse to trail ride and love, you can either find one that could be practically free or anywhere into the 900 range. But I will say one of my best horses that I've ever purchased was only $700 and he is completely kid safe. And then it also comes into if you care if the horse is registered. For me, I don't personally care, so it makes my horses technically more affordable. All I do with my horses is I really, I trail ride them, I take care of them, and sometimes we do some events. So it's nothing too big, I'm not looking to compete, so that's why unregistered horse is perfectly fine for me. And if you're looking to do the same, it'll be perfectly fine for you. Next up, where you're gonna keep your horse. So there's basically two big options. You're either gonna board it, or you're gonna put it on your own property. So when it comes to your own property, there's other expenses, which includes obviously fence work and things like that. But we're gonna basically talk about more so the boarding. So in my experience of boarding, there's been about four options. So there's pasture board, and then there's stall boarding, which includes either full board, partial board, or self board. So what those mean and where those price ranges add up to be. So pasture board, that can range anywhere from 100 to $150. That's the last type of boarding that I have done before we moved our horses to our property. And so what that is, is the barn manager will feed the horse and then for the rest of the time, the horse will be mainly on pasture. And that's the most affordable option. It's no better, no worse if you do prefer a stall though or if your horse has some type of issues with skin that needs a stall or needs to be out of the sun more that's where you would need a stall. So moving on to the stall, stall options are always more expensive than pasture board, but as I said, there's a couple options. So there's self board, partial board, and full board. The most expensive being full board and the cheapest being self board. So self board around my area runs about the same as pasture board. You're getting a stall, but in lieu of, you have to take care of every aspect of the horse. So that's going out and feeding however many times a day you wanna feed your horse and clean the horse's stall, letting your horse out to pasture those type of things. So that's gonna stay around the same price of pasture board, 100, 150, depending where you go. Then we have partial board. So partial board in my town includes feeding the horse and letting the horse out to pasture. So that can range anywhere from 250 to 350, depending on the facility and what they offer. So if there's more land that they're gonna be out on pasture, if they have an arena, if they have a round pen, so on and so forth. So that's what that's like for 
partial board that's just feeding and they're taking care of letting the horse out into pasture. Now, full board, this is all the works. They're actually feeding, letting your horse out to pasture, buying the hay and grain, usually buying the shavings that go in the stall. So all of that, and in my area, that can range anywhere from $350 to six hundred dollars but trust me it's only preference at this point and what your schedule can take it didn't matter to me that my horses were on pasture because they were able to be out all day graze all day and then come in to eat and then go back on pasture now it comes to actually feeding the horse so basically what a horse needs is grain and hay and then supplements in certain case scenarios for my horses we keep it pretty simple none of my horses are on any supplements um, sometimes in the summer we do put trigger on a supplement just for his skin but for the majority he's rarely ever on that so grain though it can range from $14 to $30 so we have four horses two of my horses are really easy keepers so what I mean by that is they can manage their weight really well so they use a $14 feed that's from tractor supply the brand is Dumar and that works great for them it keeps them super fat super healthy and then on the other hand my other two horses they're a little bit of hard keepers so we actually have them on a senior feed which is a seminal senior feed and that's actually upward of twenty dollars so it just depends but the do more feed is just as good it just doesn't have as much protein in it than the senior feed so more protein usually the more expensive the grain will be and then hay in my area is about fifteen dollars for a two string bale of tna so that's timothy and alfalfa you can price shop it around in my area too so i have seen as low as twelve dollars and as high as $15, $16. Okay, so, so far we've got the horse, we've got a place for the horse to stay, and we have fed the horse. Now we need to talk about medical. So basically, how to keep your horse really healthy. So for horses, there's a blood test that they have to get annually, so once a year, that's called a Coggins test. So a Coggins test is a blood test that detects a horse disease called equine infectious anemia. So they are required to have that. And if you go to any shows or if you travel with your horse, you always need to have a, in my area, it's in a paper form or on your phone that just proves that it has a negative Coggins test. It's very contagious. So that is always an annual expense. That ranges in my area from 30 to $40. And then a farrier. So what a farrier does, it actually trims, clips a horse's hoofs. So horses have to maintain really healthy hoofs. So a farrier every four, six, eight weeks. I just say that range because it really depends on the horse. If your horse's hoofs grow quicker or if they get damaged more, they may need sooner. Or if your horse's hoofs don't grow as quick and there's no cracks or anything like that, they can probably go out more of the eight weeks. So what that range is around is about 30 to $45, depending on your farrier. And that's for barefoot horses. All my horses are barefoot and I've never needed shoes on my horses, so it's fairly inexpensive. Now, if you do have to shoe a horse, that can go up into upwards $100 and you'll need to replace them. So that one does get kind of expensive, but all my horses have been barefoot. I know a ton of people with barefoot horses. If you're just trail riding, you're gonna be pretty much perfectly fine with just a barefoot horse. And then also what I like to do at the same time that I get my horse's hoofs trimmed, I go ahead and worm them. Horses need to be wormed about every six weeks and they need to be alternating wormers. So they range from anywhere from $5 upward to $20 depending on the brand, but that's actually a really fairly inexpensive part of having a horse and then also another yearly thing that they have to get is their teeth floated so what that means is a horse dentist just has to file down some of their teeth that get sharp over time and that can be kind of expensive we actually use someone who doesn't use power tools and it's only sixty dollars annually or it can be upward of maybe three hundred dollars depending on the case at one point one of my horses had to be pretty sedated to get their teeth floated so all the sedation added up and it was pretty expensive but now they all do really well with it, so it's just $60 annually. And some horses even go one to two years. Um, some are on the one year, but some can even go out farther, so then it's less than annually. So we've pretty much gone over all the necessities. Now it comes to more so the fun part, so your supplies. A lot of people think that they have to get every last tool that's in your local tractor supply, feed store, tack shop, but really you don't when it comes to having a horse. You can keep it basic if you wanna keep it basic. So what's really important is fly spray. This is a Bronco fly spray and I've also used a more expensive fly spray. And trust me, they work the same exact way to keep the flies away. I don't think there's any magical juice in any fly spray. They've all been really great to me. This bottle of fly spray is half the price of another bottle of fly spray that I was using. Flies stayed away the same way. So it is essential though, you need fly spray. Again, you are gonna need grooming tools, but you don't need everything that's at the tax store, trust me. Really, the basics are a hoof pick, and you can find these sometimes at just $1. So this is important. Then, you're gonna need a curry comb. These also come in many forms. You can get a super fancy name brand one, and it will probably be a bit expensive. This one is just 
not name brand does the same exact thing as the name brand does and this is just a couple dollars as well and then a brush you can also use a comb or even like an inside brush if you want whichever is the cheapest this brush is really not anything special this is a name brand so this one's a little bit more expensive but I have also used a dollar store hairbrush on it and it works just fine then you'll need a hard bristle brush just to get the dirt off again these can be fairly cheap and then a more soft bristle brush so those are the basics for grooming that you need that can get you by and perfectly groom your horse you don't need every single thing to groom your horse those work really great and all those grooming supplies that you need for just the basics will probably run you around under $30 and once you have them that's a one-time expense and you don't need to pretty much buy them again unless you of course lose it or break it but I haven't done that yet <laughs> and one important part of it though you will need is a halter and a lead rope again same thing with grooming tools these can get really expensive depending where you buy them I have used a lot of these halters there's two different types but these are my favorite these rope ones and I have used really nice brand ones and just a regular tractor supply brand and they all do the same exact thing the horse has no idea so you can get these at tax stores tractor supply and they run fairly cheap I think this one's like $20 but we actually have a local tack auction and I have scored these for about five to ten dollars lead rope same exact thing you can get these fairly cheap this one I actually got at my tack auction for literally I think two dollars and fifty cents it just depends and all of these things you can purchase used as well and they do the same exact job you can find them on eBay Craigslist Facebook marketplace anywhere that you can buy used stuff you can definitely find um, use tack that's perfectly good and then in horse world you're gonna need lots of buckets buckets are really important whether it's for feeding carrying things these can get pretty expensive but again local tax store we got these I want to say for maybe five dollars so you can get these again even online used they are perfectly fine okay and then to the things that you would think that could be pretty expensive a saddle now let me just show you guys this is a really nice leather saddle that I got off Craigslist and it was only a hundred dollars so you can find deals everywhere you can of course buy a really expensive brand new saddle but sometimes even brand new saddles aren't even as comfortable as nice worn saddles so this hundred dollar saddle has worked perfectly for me it's a great starter saddle you can also find synthetic saddles and those end up being cheaper than leather saddles and they are great saddles they're really lightweight for starting you don't want to be clunking something over a horse anyways if you're starting out or if you just want to get out and jump on a trailer I just you know throw a light synthetic saddle on and you're good to go okay and then a bridle so again keep it simple and it can be really inexpensive so I purchased this one which has a lot of dust on it because I don't even use it and this one was upward of maybe $70 just because it's fancy and I don't even use it anymore I literally use this $8 bridle that I got at my local tack auction and it works just as good if not better than that $75 one so super simple just keep it simple as, as long as it's safe and the hardware is really good they're perfectly fine nothing makes them any better and then with reins you can do the same thing you can go out and buy really expensive reins or you can just go to your like your local tax store even track to supply and you can buy them for you know 10 to 15 dollars it can be fairly inexpensive all right guys so we've bought the horse we have a place for it to stay we've fed it we've covered their medical expenses and all the basic supplies that you need to get started for your first horse now one of the big things I'm gonna add into here is lessons it's really important to get lessons if you're just starting off or even if you've been doing this for a while it's always important someone will always teach you something new so depending where you go in the experience of lessons or what you're trying to do if you're just doing basic or it can be more expensive if you're doing like some type of performance or a certain specialty that you're trying to learn but basic lessons can run you anywhere from maybe 30 to 60 dollars a lesson but they're really helpful even if you just do two lessons a month that's even better than none so that can be pretty affordable as well like I said you guys in the beginning it's always gonna be a little bit more expensive because you're just getting all your supplies just like anything else but over the long run pretty much it's just maintenance keeping up with them feeding them and you're bored and if you just keep it simple owning a horse can be fairly inexpensive of course it's a more expensive pet to have but overall it can be inexpensive if you just keep it simple you don't need to have the greatest and latest we keep it really simple at our barn over here and we like to use used tech we go to our tech auctions all right you guys so that is the basic breakdown of what it costs to own a horse don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the FEI YouTube channel I hope you guys enjoyed this video and meeting my farm all right guys I'll see you later